investors, Ben and Jackie, and everyone that's at the River Amsterdam. This is Stefan from Feed the Hungry. We are so grateful for your support and your partnership in reaching out to the least of these. In this past year, we crossed over the half million mark, over a half million children getting to taste and see that the Lord is good in 26 nations around the world. This week, I'm in Hinotega, Nicaragua, checking in on one of our projects here where a new feeding center is being built, a community housing project and a church planted for the people that work in the landfill in this city. They are hearing the word of God. They're getting good meals because of your support. And this community is going to be transformed in Jesus' name. Thank you for putting feet to your faith, for loving the least of these in word and in deed. And thank you for all you're doing to see the kingdom of God touch everyone all around the earth. God bless you. We love you. Let's believe together for a great year in 2024 to see the Lord do things that go way beyond our wildest dreams and expectations. my Lord, send me, transform me, shake me, mold me, shape me, form me, cut away whatever you want to cut away, remove whatever you want to remove, burn out whatever needs to be burned out, change me, rearrange me, let me be everything you've made me and called me to be, let me fulfill everything you've called me to fulfill, here am I Lord, here am I, I hear the cry of the lost. I hear the cry of the broken. I hear the cry of the sick. I hear the cry of the needy. I hear the cry of a generation calling out saying, if there is a God, please send someone. Whom can I send? Who will go for us? Who, who will hear that cry? Who will hear that voice? Who will hear? When you encounter Jesus Christ, it's like a burning bush experience where you can hear that same calling. Oh, God has seen the affliction of the people of Netherlands. God has heard the cry of the people of Europe. God knows the trouble that the devil puts people through in this generation. 
and he has come down by the Holy Spirit to deliver people. And now he is sending you and he is sending me, every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, from the least to the greatest. It doesn't matter your education. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter your status in life. It doesn't matter the level of your bank account. It doesn't matter what car you drive, what house you live in. God wants to use every single one of us. Pastors Ben and Jackie and everyone that's at the River Amsterdam, this is Stefan from Feed the Hungry. We are so grateful for your support and your partnership in reaching out to the least of these. In this past year, we crossed over the half million mark, over a half million children getting to taste and see that the Lord is good in 26 nations around the world. This week, I'm in Hinotega, Nicaragua, checking in on one of our projects here where a new feeding center is being built, a community housing project, and a church planted for the people that work in the landfill in this city. They are hearing the word of God. They're getting good meals because of your support, and this community is going to be transformed in Jesus' name. Thank you for putting feet to your faith for loving the least of these in word and in deed. And thank you for all you're doing to see the kingdom of God touch everyone all around the earth. God bless you. We love you. Let's believe together for a great year in 2024 to see the Lord do things that go way beyond our wildest dreams and expectations. Dat is de naam van een kerk voor 
Het is een Amerikaans concept en hij is vandaag op Eiburg met de eerste dienst begonnen. Ja, de River is een uh, nieuwe startende gemeente die we anderhalf jaar geleden gestart zijn in Amsterdam-Oost. Uh, daar zaten we in een hotelzaaltje anderhalf jaar lang, echt pionieren. En uh, nu hebben we dit mooie gebouw van God gekregen, geloven wij, om hier uh, verder te bouwen aan deze gemeente. En uh, iedereen is van harte welkom. Het land zal bedekt worden met de kennis van de heerlijkheid van de Heer. Zoals het water de zee bedekt. En jij en ik zijn deel van die eindtijd. Kerk. Een glorieuze kerk. Een stralende kerk. Een heilige kerk. Als je kijkt ook wat kerkdiensten voor schade hebben aangericht met de verspreiding van het virus, zou ik hier heel voorzichtig mee zijn. God is de grootste opwekking die deze wereld ooit gezien heeft aan het plannen. De grootste golf van de genade en de glorie van God. Een golf van wonderen, een golf van tekenen, een golf van kracht. Zoals jullie weten, op zondagen in ons huidige pand waar we nu zitten, zitten we elke zondag zo vol. Dus vanaf zondag 2 april, bijna elke zondag, zitten we hier in de rij Amsterdam. En hij zei, ga dan heen en maak alle volken tot mijn discipelen. En wij zijn hier op deze aarde om het licht te laten schijnen. En de duisternis overwint het licht niet, maar het licht overwint de duisternis. Dus we gaan niet in een hoekje verstoppen, wachten totdat Jezus ons uit deze boze wereld haalt. Wij gaan onze voeten zetten op nieuwe plaatsen. We gaan nieuwe steden innemen voor Koning Jezus. We gaan nieuwe bedrijven bouwen. We gaan dingen kopen. We gaan onze kinderen opvoeden om de Heer te dienen. En we gaan een verschil maken in deze wereld. Wij zijn het Gideons leger van Jezus Christus. En wij laten onze stem klinken op de bergtoppen, in de dalen, op de steden, op de dagen. Oh, Halleluja! Gloria, de machtige naam van Jezus.
that's higher than before. Oh, I want to love you more than before. I want to worship you.
Worship him tonight. The bow before your throne. All the elders cast their crown before the Lamb of God and say, You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Oh 
lift our hands to the Lord tonight. Oh, Father, you're a miracle working God. Come on, just worship the Lord out of your spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, we worship you tonight. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, la mama Maria, na 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 do. Oh, ria na 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 na. Kane la momo ya na mas. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, ria na 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 na. Oh, ria na 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 mos. Oh, ria na 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 mos. Shone na 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 mo, si ana la mamuria. Oh, we worship you tonight, Jesus. Come on, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Worship the King of Kings. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we adore you, Lord. Oh, we exalt you. There's no one like. fresh oil be poured out. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your presence. For your presence, Lord. Thank 
Exalted one, mighty one, holy one, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We adore you, Lord. For there's no one like you, Lord. of a fresh oil being poured out on every head, on every heart. Thank you for the new wine of heaven. Thank you for times of refreshing coming from your presence. Thank you, Lord. Wrap us Wrap your people in your presence. Thank you, Lord. In you we find all that we need. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Have your way, Lord. Just be filled right now. Just be filled right now. Oh, and drink and receive in your homes, wherever you're watching from. Receive right now. All across this auditorium, receive right now from the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we've come to receive. We've come to receive from you, Lord. Not by our might, not by our power, but by your Spirit. Holy Spirit, how we need you. How we need you. How we need you. How we need you. Nothing without you. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Giver of life. Satisfier of our hearts.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands right where you are and just receive from heaven right now. You don't have to wait for someone to pray for you. You can receive right where you are. If you're up top, you're closer to heaven. It's easier to receive. Jesus. <laughs> oh, you're wonderful, Lord. <laughs> you're a wonderful God. You're a wonderful God. Oh, you're a wonderful God. Wonderful, 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 strength giver, giver of life. Giver of all that we need. Some people say, what do I do? Just enjoy the presence of God. Just enjoy His presence. Geniet ervan. Het is een voorproefje van de hemel. In his presence, you find everything you need. Everything you need is found in his presence. Just reach out and receive. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful God. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. Wonderful. 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 Just one glimpse of your glory, Lord. Just one touch of your hand. And we will never, ever, ever be the same. Thank you, Lord. He's holy. He's holy. Holy are you, Lord. Holy. Beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous for words. Too wonderful for comprehension. Oh, you're wonderful, Lord. We stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So good, yeah. so good. You're so good. So good, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated if you can. Thank you, Lord. just sense God's presence here in this place. <laughs> I looked forward to today because it's our first normal Sunday, you know. It's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Mita, come up here. Come. Bring, bring me mit. Oh, se pacati arabos. I wanted to pray for you on Thursday, because Thursday you were like a mess as well in Bible school. But here you are again. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord, for this precious young lady. Thank you for the call and the destiny you have on her life. Thank you for the deep work you're doing in her heart by your anointing, Lord. Thank you for taking her to another level, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just one touch. Just one touch. Just one touch. From the Master's hand. May never be the same again. 
just one glimpse of his glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you encounter Jesus, everything changes. Everything changed for me in July 2006 when the presence of God just came into my bedroom at 3 o'clock in the morning. I was the least deserving of his love, but there he came. I'm still trying to recover from it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. How sweet is His touch. It can melt the hardest heart. can quench the thirsty soul. That's why Jesus said, come to me. If any man is thirsty, let him come. Let him drink. Let him come to me and drink. Let him come and drink from the fountain that never runs dry. Come and drink from the water that quenches the thirsty heart. Come and let the master do a deep work. Bring me ties. Come, bring, bring me ties. Right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lift those hands high. Thank you for your touch, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your touch. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Never the same. cousin. Come, come. Come. Oh, Jesus. I wasn't planning on any of this, but the Holy Spirit was. Lift your hands high. Thank you for your anointing, Lord. Touch. Touch your Lord. Oh, Jesus. You can tell him, Lord, operate on me tonight. <laughs> Give some more of you, Lord. There's nothing wrong with you that a little bit more of Jesus can't fix. There's things you might be dealing with, struggling with, walking around with, but one touch from Jesus can move it all out of the way. Just one touch, just one word, just one drop of his love in his new wine can change it all. Can change it all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. know your name, but uh, with the white shirt there, yeah, come, the Lord's touching you, thank you, Lord, don't become a spectator tonight, just receive from the Lord tonight, the Lord wants to touch every single person here in this place, I'm going to preach in a minute, but we just follow the Holy Spirit, lift your hands high.
Close your eyes. The Lord's touching you. Thank you, Lord, for your touch. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet, never the same from tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Don't go out here. Don't go out here. Don't go out here. Oh, you're so good, Lord. You're so good. He's the mender of the broken heart. David said, he restores my soul, quickens me, refreshes me. (laughs) Times of refreshing come from his presence. I feel refreshed tonight, even just walking around here. Ooh, I feel like I'm under a shower. so funny. (laughs) Fullness of joy in His presence. At his right hand, pleasures forevermore. This church is going to be the happiest place in all of Holland. Amen. No depressed church here. (laughs) Hallelujah. I'm not talking about some fake happy. I'm talking about deep joy. Deep joy. Joy inexpressible and full of glory. Joy unspeakable. Joy that you don't have words to explain. You're like, why are you happy? I don't understand. There's a storm raging. There's wind blowing. There's rainfall. But I'm happy. I got a joy. A deep joy. A heavenly joy. Why? In His presence. In His presence. In His presence. (laughs)
world. and angels bow Ask Pastor David to come up and give the announcements for tonight. Welcome to the River Sunday night, our English service. Hallelujah. This Thursday, we have uh, basics again. A new uh, round of basics is starting up right here in Hofdorp. So that's going to be 10 Thursdays starting this Thursday. And uh, it's uh, under the leadership of Pastor Tim and Mark and Pauline. They have uh, been putting together an amazing curriculum. It's going really deep. And maybe you're new here at this church and you have not gone through basics yet. Then that's a must. It's so powerful you get to really know what makes the river the river it's really powerful it goes deep into the word it's about the foundations of our faith so if you have not done basics yet then you can sign up either on our website or after the service there is an info booth in the lobby where you can sign up for basics that's starting this thursday awesome then this coming sunday is our next new members presentation and uh, it's always a great time if uh, you have been coming for a while and the Lord has spoken to your heart to make the river your home church, then you can make, yeah, you can make that step basically and uh, yeah, make the river your home church and it's a blessing to see family members being added and uh, sign up. That's this coming Sunday, um, new members presentation. And then I don't know where all the youth revival people, we have youth camp coming up, awesome. And this is actually the last 
week to sign up still for youth camp and you see the dates here on the screen the 30th of april through the 3rd of may is again our youth camp it's powerful and as robert Jan was saying this afternoon it's really a time where lots of youth are being marked in the presence we really see how young people are being totally changed marked and being put on fire by the lord so if that's you if you uh, fit into the age groups then see one of our leaders and sign up for that youth camp is coming around and last announcement really briefly is forte our women's conference our annual women's conference with pastor jackie which is going to be on the 20th of april and we have this every year and everyone who has been coming to one of the all the ladies that have been coming you know this is going to be a powerful time so invite some ladies as well to come and um wow no telling what the lord is going to do for the women's conference hallelujah that's it for the announcements pastor ben back to you hallelujah thank you jesus oh man you better go sit down <laughs> give her a big hand <laughs> hallelujah man man don't go anywhere tonight because tonight we're just getting started. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to First Chronicles 29 before we give to the Lord tonight. Uh, who was here this morning? Who was not? Okay, good. Because um, I shared along these lines this morning as well. But I'll go, I'll go a little further than I did this morning. Um, We're in uh, the closing weeks of phase one of this building here. How, how, how many are enjoying the building? Amen. It's pretty awesome, right? Um, great job, by the way, Mark. Look, looks great with those lights. It's awesome. Um, but uh, before we can go to phase two, we have to close out phase one. And by a miracle, the Lord has brought in the first 1.3 million already. To pay every, everything up to now has been paid, but we we're still standing in in faith for the last two hundred thousand euros, which I'm believing that God is bringing that in in the next weeks. Amen. Amen. So uh, and tonight's going to be a special night in that as well. We're believing for miracles, and I believe God wants to bless every single one of us this month of April, because if God's going to do it, I believe He's going to do it through a lot of us. Amen. Because if He can get it to us, He can get us through us, right? Because I know we we're, we're all have a heart of giving. But we're going to look at uh, King David because King David also was building uh, a building. And a big one too. And it was full of gold. This one isn't. But uh, maybe we'll get there one time. But uh, verse 1 it says, Furthermore, King David said to all the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced and the work is great. Because the temple is not for man but for the Lord God. So they were building a building that was for the Lord God. Of course, we understand that this building is not a temple in the sense of what it was like in the Old Covenant. Right now, you and I are those living stones. We are that temple. Amen. But this building, God wants to use to bring a lot of you and I's in. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's a place where people of the people of God come together and we worship the Lord. So it's a, name, it's a place for the name of the Lord where people can get saved. People can get water baptized. People can get delivered. People can get filled with the Holy Spirit. People can get healed. And the name of Jesus will be glorified through this place. Even this, this, uh, this afternoon, we had eight people water baptized. So in last week, we had a bunch as well. And then from that, every week, we have water baptism. So... You know, without any push, eight people, bam, brand new believers, all water baptized. So this is awesome. Hallelujah. So the work is great because it's not for man, but for the Lord God. Now for the house of my God, David said, I have prepared with all my might gold for the things to be made of gold, silver for the things of silver, bronze for the things of bronze, iron for the things of iron, wood for the things of wood, onyx stones, stones to be set glistening stones of various colors all kinds of precious stones and marble slabs in abundance he said i have prepared for the lord for the for this place with all my might no holding back i've been diligent he said to do this with everything i got I've made it my single purpose i've made it my single focus i've gone all in for it Thanks for the enthusiasm here tonight. <laughs> then he says, moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God. 
I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I've prepared for the holy house. My own special treasure of gold and silver. Then he starts naming what that is. He starts off with 3,000 talents of gold. Of the finest gold of Ophir. Which is 90,000 kilos of gold. Do you know what one kilo of gold costs in today's economy? 60 something. 60, 60 something thousand euros. One kilo. He gave 90,000 kilos from his personal treasure. Who still doesn't believe in prosperity? <laughs> King David was called a man after God's own heart. So he said, I've prepared with all my might for the house from the kingdom. But he said, moreover, I didn't stop there. Because I've set my affection. Because I have love for the house of my God. I've set my affection on the house of my God. I've prepared also from my personal treasury. What I have as my personal treasure, my nest egg, my, what's, what's valuable to me. And I've given it all into the kingdom of God. Why? Because somebody preached a good offering message? No. Why? Because I've set my affection on the house of my God. Because I, I have liefde opgevat voor mijn God. In other words, what God is building in my generation, it's important to me, David said. I don't want this opportunity to pass me by where I'm living in a nice house, but God dwells in a tent. That's what David said. I want to build him a house, and I want to do it five star. I want to go all in. I'm going to do it with all my might. Why? Because I love my God. He's done too much for me to be, for me to be blasé about it, for me to be casual about it, for me to be lukewarm about it. I want to be red hot on fire when it comes to my giving. I want to be full of zeal. I want to be full of passion. I don't want it to be just a donation given to my God because he's worthy of much more than donations. It would be a slap in the face of the one who gave it all for me to give him a donation. He doesn't need my donations. I want to give him all of my worship. I want to give him all of the praise and I want to give him what's valuable to me. Many people, they set their affection on their own things. But the difference is made for those people who really prosper, the, the people who's, for whom God's hand comes upon them strong, it's the people that say, Lord, all that other stuff, I, I, I don't really care. But what I really care about is your kingdom. I make your business, I make it my business. I make what you're doing in my generation, I make it my personal ambition to be a part of it and to be a big part of it. I'm not going to just like let it pass by. I want to be a big part of what you're doing in my generation. If we have people like that, just give a big shout to the Lord so he knows where to find you. Amen. I've set my affection on the house of my God. That's a hard thing. That's an inner moving from inside. It's like, oh God, I can't wait to give. Oh God, I want to be a big part. Where, you, where you're pressing in, not just like, oh Lord, give me, give me, give me. But you're different. You're after the order of Abraham. That you know you are blessed to just, not just be blessed yourself, but also to be a blessing. Where you're like, Lord, I, I, I want to, you, you can get it to me, get it through me, Lord. I want to be a big part. I want to stretch my faith to believe you for big things so I can be a big part of what you're doing in my generation. I want to be a part of winning souls. I want to be a part of launching out churches. I want to be a part of feeding the poor. I don't want to just watch the news and say, oh, so sad for them. I don't want to watch the news and, and watch my generation go, go to hell and die because of drug overdose. And I don't know what else. But I want to make a difference in my generation. And I believe, Lord, you use me for it. And then he says this. He says, I, I gave from my personal treasure 90,000 kilos of gold. And then he starts naming all the things, what he's giving. And then he says, at the end of verse 5, he says, Who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? Who's willing to set himself apart, to separate himself unto the Lord? Some people say, Lord, uh, you can have all of me, but, but they argue about tithing. You're a hypocrite. You can't say, Lord, all, I, I, I'm all yours and then co complain about the 10%. Because really, everything we are is His. Amen. Everything we have is His. Amen. We're getting a really good deal because we get to keep the 90%. Right? <laughs> really, 
God could ask us for everything all the time. He doesn't. He doesn't, but he could. He could. And then the, when the people heard that, verse 6, Then the leaders of the fathers' houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captains of thousands and of hundreds, with the officers over the king's work, offered willingly. Everybody say willingly. willingly. See, God is really pleased when there's a willing, joyous, happy offering. And people give gladly and willingly. Under pressure. Nobody wants a gift under pressure. We've all had it that somebody shows up to your birthday or something like that. And, they, and they, they're like, they didn't really get, want to get anything. So they looked in their house what they still had and they bring that. And it's like, do you really enjoy getting a gift like that? No, none of us do. But uh, neither does God. But God really loves it when his children come. And it's, it's funny because when your kids come on your birthday or Christmas or something like that, everything they have is all yours right my kids even dad can I have 20 euros why I want to buy you a gift <laughs> and it's actually like I'm happy giving to them and they come back and they do something it's like you know Christmas time they come and they're like oh, I got you this but you know you they got it with money that's yours you know <laughs> Where did you get that money from? What's that money in your spire pot? You know, that, that's, that came from somewhere. <laughs> but you rejoice in it because it's a, it's a display of affection. See, people that grumble about giving don't have a giving problem. They have a love problem. Because their love is a clearly and apparently somewhere else. They love things more. They love themselves more. They love this world more. They love the material stuff more. But, but I don't know about you, but I believe I'm, 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 I'm in a room of people that say, Lord, your kingdom first. Your kingdom first. Jesus said it. He said, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all the other things that other people are dying to get, that other people are chasing and chasing and chasing to get, they all come chasing after you. Why? Because you got the right priority. You put God first. You've set your affection on the house of God, on the things of God, on the kingdom of God. So the people offered willingly. They're like, Lord, what can we give? Just like David. David was radical. And they're like, we're going to be radical too. We're not going to watch him take all the credit. We're not going to watch him build the thing by himself. We're going to all be a part of it. I'm going to be a part of it. And they, I think maybe they even had a little giving competition. Verse, verse 9, then the people rejoiced for they had offered willingly because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord and King David also rejoiced greatly now watch what the result is of this all this giving because David wasn't going to build this house himself he he knew that God had spoken to him you have blood on your hands you can't build it yourself but the, he he's like okay if I can't build build it I, I'm going to pay for it so he, he collects all this money and, and, and he gives all this money and then uh, his son Solomon is going to be the one building it so Solomon goes and he builds it and actually I was reading this before we started this whole project here project Rayable and I was reading it and I, uh, something jumped out at me and I've shared it before but I want to share it again tonight in uh, second chronicles chapter 5 verse 1 so you can read chapter 3 and chapter 4 of second chronicles where Solomon starts building the temple and if you read through it it's like the doors are of gold and then this is gold and that is gold everything is done five star no they're not like let's save God some money and I think some churches they think like okay uh, God's really pleased if we save money God's not in the saving money business God is in the saving souls business Amen. And he's like, I will not spare any expense to get the message out to people. So, but Solomon, he builds it five star, maybe seven star. It's ridiculous. It's full of gold. And it, no expense is spared. But then verse 1, watch this. When all the work was done, 2 Chronicles 5 verse 1. It says, so all, so all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. Everybody say finished. finished. And 
When it was finished, watch this. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and all the furnishings, and he put them in the treasuries of the house of God. Everybody say overflow. After everything was done and everything was paid for, guess what? They're like, let's fill the treasuries. They weren't like scraping at the bottom of the barrel trying to make it done, make it finished. No, they were like, there's overflow. There's more than enough. The treasuries are filled. And I prophesy over every single person here, every single giver. You're not going to be by the end of the month. You're not going to be scraping. By the end of this year, you're not going to be scraping. You're going to have storehouses filled with an abundance. The Bible Bible says, I will fill your storehouses with grain. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 that when you're faithful with your tithes and offerings, that God says, I will be faithful to open up the windows of heaven above you and you only have one problem. Where am I going to put it all? You will not have room enough to receive it all. That's overflow. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. 2024 is not a year of lack. It's not a year of going down. It's not a year of going under. It's a year of going over. It's a year where your storehouses are filled, where, the, where your presses, your fine presses are filled to such an overflowing that they run over. Hallelujah. He anoints my head with oil. My cups run over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you take it, rejoice tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody shout overflow. Pastor Ronnie is preaching on, uh, on the months of the heaps right now. I was like, he. <laughs> it's from 1 Chronicles, or 2 Chronicles 31. We'll go there real quick too. It's about King Hezekiah. He has the same problem. They put God's house first. When King Hezekiah became king, he says, first things first. Let, let's open up the doors of the temple. In other words, let's put the kingdom of God first. They're like, we're not going to close the church. We're not going to close out with prayer. We're going to keep the fire on the altar. We're going to have services. We're going to let the Lord move. We're going to preach the gospel. We're going to pray for people. We're going to minister to the sick. If you bring it to today's thing. But then he, he opens up the temple and he restores the priesthood. The priest said, oh, you know, gone back to to regular secular jobs because no one was giving. And then he rebukes the people. He's like, hey, guys, let's, let's bring offerings to the temple so that the work of the Lord can be done. Let's put the kingdom of God first, he says. And then in 2 Chronicles 31 verse 4, we see that happening. And watch what happens. It says, moreover, he commanded the people who dwelt in Jerusalem to contribute support to the priests and the Levites, that they might devote themselves to the law of the Lord. And as soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in abundance. Everybody say in abundance. abundance. The first fruits of grain and wine and oil and honey and of all the produce of the field. And they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. And the children of Israel and Judah, who dwelt in the cities of Judah, brought the tithe of oxen and sheep, also the tithe of holy things, which were consecrated to the Lord their God, and they laid them in? <laughs> they laid them in heaps. In the Nederlands that there's stapels. In the third month, they began laying them in heaps, and they finished in the seventh month. And when Hezekiah and the leaders came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. And Azariah, the chief priest from the house of Zadok, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and what? And have plenty left. That's abundance. That's overflow. That's your portion. That's your inheritance. At the end of the month, at the end of the year, you've had plenty to eat and you have plenty left over. You had plenty for your vacation and plenty left over. You've been given more than you've ever given and you had more left over than you ever had left over. Why? The Bible says one who keeps more than is just and it leads to poverty. But there's another who gives more than is normal and it leads to an abundance. He who 
waters others will be watered himself. Hallelujah. You are of those people that scatter abroad. You are givers. And guess what? It leads to ridiculous overflow and abundance that people scratch their head and say, what in the world? What economy are you part of? You can say heavenly economy. Hallelujah. I'm hooked up with heaven. I'm hooked up. I got a heavenly bank account you don't even know about. And the good news is the blessing deeds can't touch it either. <laughs> okay, but watch this. We've had enough to eat and have plenty left for the Lord God has blessed his people. You think when you read this, oh, the priests were blessed. But they said, no, God has blessed his people. The house was filled. There was treasures in the temple. The priests had plenty to eat. The staff was all paid to say it like that. And then guess what? The people were blessed. So they were bringing, and when they come back home, they're like, oh, we got more to bring. And they come back again, and they come back, and they come back home, and there's more to bring. And guess what? It all led to stopples and stopples, heaps upon heaps. I prophesy heaps in your house, heaps in God's house, overflow on every side, more than enough. This month of April is a supernatural month. We just sang about you do miracles so great. But you know what? I'm believing for miracles for every person under the sound of my voice. Miracles of provision. Miracles of debt elimination. Miracles of abundance. A surplus of prosperity. Businesses flourishing. The right clients coming in. Supernatural favor coming into your business. That people wonder what in the world. But we give God the glory. And you're going to testify about staples. I got one more scripture in Psalm 126. This sums up what I'm talking about. Psalm 126. Hallelujah. Who's stretching out their faith to believe for big things in the month of April? Hallelujah. Big things. Everybody say big. As big as Dylan's laugh. Psalm 126 verse 1, it says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, speaking of the church, we were like those who dream. Yes. Hallelujah. In April, why not, why, not be, why not have April be like a dream? Now we talk about it like, my goodness, <laughs> look what, we, we won't stop singing, look what the Lord. <laughs> Where there be so many testimonies yes. that we don't have enough time on a Sunday to share them all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you say, oh, that would be great if that happened for me. But guess what? When you stretch out your faith, God is a miracle working God. But when you believe Him, you will see the glory of God. Amen. Some people think it's just, oh, it's luck or coincidence. No, it's according to your faith. So it will be done. Hallelujah. I'm trying to stir up your faith that you believe for big things. See, people are like, well, I'm content where I'm at. Yeah, it's not, a, it's, it's not just about you, but it's about others. It's about the kingdom. It's about God doing big things through your life Hallelujah. and blessing you in the process. I believe that some people are going to get some new cars and vehicles and vaca vacations. And like we heard this morning, some a lady was in debt, but then God gave her a five-star vacation and pulled her out of debt. Yes. Amen. In one day. In one day. See, you're one phone call away. You're one email away. You're one blessing away for pinching yourself saying, my goodness, what's happening? We were like those who dream. Some people don't dream big enough. Some people don't have any dreams. They lost their dreams in kindergarten. Your mom always said, oh, you know, don't, don't, don't fantasize like that. Don't have big dreams. We don't ever have luck. Everything goes bad. Do you know what family you're from? And you stop dreaming. But I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you by faith to keep on dreaming. Like God pulled Abraham out of his tent and he said, look up. Look at those stars. Can you count them? He's like, no. That's how many children you'll have. He's like, but Lord, my, my body, I'm old and my wife is old and we don't have any kids. Keep looking at the sky. Keep dreaming big. And guess what? The Bible says Abraham grew strong in faith and he obtained the promise of God. Hallelujah. You're going to obtain the promises of God through faith and patience. We were like those who dream. 
Then what? Then our mouth was filled with laughter. Some people didn't even like the laughter tonight, but you're going to be laughing so much. <laughs> religious, pe religious people will be grinding their teeth, foaming at the mouth, but you go, oh, hallelujah, man, my God is a good God. And our tongue would sing, sing, and then they said among the nations, then they said in all of Holland, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for? Some people missed their opportunity. The Lord has done great things for? Me. And we are glad. And the Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Then it says, bring back, back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the, in the south. Those who sow in tears, maybe they'll reap in joy. Those who sow in tears, if they're lucky, they'll, have, they'll win the lottery. Those who sow in tears, if they grow up in the right neighborhood and have the right last name and the right skin color and all this stuff, then they'll reap in joy. Some sit at me, some sit at tegen. Those who sow in tears, what? Shall reap in joy. Sometimes you go around, you're like, oh, get it. <laughs> it hurts when it leaves. But you won't have to cry long. Because when you give willingly and joyfully, and even if it's like, man, it's special treasure to me. It's, 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 it, the Lord puts his hand on something and he's like, release that. He never asks you something that he's not willing to give you back a hundred, hundredfold. Amen. Hallelujah. He doesn't have any needs, but we need his blessing. Those who sow in tears, they will reap in joy. So God has a harvest in mind for every single person here. The chair you're sitting in is a harvest. Amen. This building is a harvest. Amen. It's because people stretch out their faith. We said, oh man, God's making room for us. Where we, can, where we can be fruitful in the land. That's a harvest of faith. And it's a harvest of a lot of seeds. So if you don't believe it, then check our story. Started with nothing. Started with the two of us. The Bible says that he'll make a small one a nation. And even the smallest will become a thousand. What can God do in your life in the next six months? What can God do in your life before the clock strikes midnight, December 31st, 2024? Don't just live like a robot, like a zombie, just Monday, Tuesday, just going to work, living my life. Live with expectancy. The Bible says that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above. Exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. So ask big and watch God do exceeding abundantly above. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing. A sower doesn't sow just every now and then. A sower goes continually. Continually goes forth. Bearing seed for sowing. Shall doubtless. These are not the words of Ben Kuska. This is also not the word of another prosperity preacher. This is Bible. Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Bringing his sheaves with him. Just close your eyes and see yourself for a moment carrying everything you're believing God for right now. <laughs> carrying his sheaves with him. What is that harvest you're believing for? Abraham considered not his own body already dead, but what did he do? He reminded himself of the word. He considered him faithful who had promised calling those things which are not as though they are. He who goes forth bearing seed for sowing shall doubtless come again bearing his sheaves. I see you carrying. I see you coming. Pastor, ah, you won't believe it. I'll tell you, I, I do believe it. I do believe it. You say, man, it's like a dream. The Lord has done this. The Lord has done that. And we'll rejoice together that the Lord has done great things for you. Amen. Amen. I'll ask you the same as I asked the crowd this morning. And I would ask you this. If you have a good picture of what you're believing for, how would you react if all that was dropped on you 
right now. How would you respond? <laughs> How would you respond if that harvest comes in right now? Hey! <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> He's a miracle working God. His arm is not short. His ears are not deaf. He hears and he sees and he answers. Shall doubtless come again. I see you coming and carrying it. You say, I don't know where to put it, where to put it all. I've got so many problems. I don't know where to put all this harvest. I got so many problems. We don't know where to put all the people. We don't know where to start the next church because we got so much money. We don't know, we don't even know where to pick. You say, I don't know what to do with all these clients that are coming to my business. I don't have enough time to fulfill all the assignments. I don't have enough personnel to fulfill all the jobs that are given to me. Where you are right now is not where you're staying. You got to get it. You're getting a picture right now of that heavenly dream for your life. Miss Sandra, you say, oh, I don't know where to put all these kids. I don't know where to put all these ladies. But God is making room for you. Room. To the left and to the right. More kids. More ladies. More land. Hallelujah. Carrying your sheaves. Hey. Hallelujah. I'm walking around with my sheaves. I see some staples here. I see some staples in your house. Hey. People will come around and say, what's, what's this heap? What are all these cars in your driveway? Your bank will ask, why do you start all these bank accounts? Why don't you open up all these bank accounts? You get problems, uh, the bank will ask you, is it a wit was or so? What gebeurt here allemaal? No, no, it's all holy money. Hallelujah. I'm hooked up with heaven. Your job, your, your boss will say, I don't know, but I just want to promote you. And I don't know, you didn't have any bonuses in your contract, but somehow, someway, I'll give you double, double bonus. Double bonus. Some people, they lost their job because of whatever, but God will give you a better than you ever thought. Help me, help me, I need more. I, I have too much. Help me carry some of this. I have too much. It's too heavy. God's in the multiplication business. You can bring him five loaves and two fish and it looks like nothing tonight. You're like, man, what in the world? This is nothing compared to what I'm believing for. But a little seed produces a mighty harvest. Hallelujah. I feel faith in this room tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, rejoice one more time. Clap your hands. All you people, shout out to God with a voice of joy. I, I, I'm telling you, we're going to be known as that rich church. You're going to be known in your family as oh yeah, yeah that, that blessed person. You have problems with people coming to ask and ask and ask. So you need to flow with the Holy Ghost, knowing where to put it. You're going to be poor no more. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha.
Shabratakate. Ah, Sabrotoyoso. Shibratale Mankatuso. Let's put the buckets out. I'm a, we'll put them up front. The worship team can come up. We'll sing. Get your offering ready tonight. Give with faith. There's faith in this room tonight. Put that seed in the ground, believing this month is a month of harvest. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The worship team will sing. You can get your offerings ready. There's ushers if you need a machtigings card or something like that. Ask the Lord what he wants you to do. Don't do anything out of pressure, but do it out of faith. Do it out of love. Like David said, I have set my affection on the house of my God. Ask the Lord, Lord, how can I be a part of what you're doing in my generation? And do it with faith inside. Get that picture in front of you of where you're going to be. And what that harvest is. And then put the seed in, expecting a mighty harvest. Let's sing a happy song. A faith song. Look what the Lord has done or something like that. Something like that. I went to the enemy's camp. Something like that. Can you believe what the Lord has done for me? I, I don't know, but we just got to come with faith and rejoicing. Hallelujah. When you're ready to give, just come run to the front and give. I've already given. I was first. I put my seed in first. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Can you believe what the Lord has done in me?
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands. Father, we thank you tonight for your presence. Thank you for all that you've done already in this place, Lord. But I thank you, you still are moving in our midst. You still have something in prepared for us. And I thank you, Lord, that you speak to us through your word. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you feed us with your word. Thank you for scales falling off of people's eyes, Lord. Thank you that you're removing whatever has been holding people back. Thank you for downloads from heaven. Thank you for breakthroughs and turnarounds in every life. We give you praise right now. We give you glory, Lord. You are awesome. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Tonight I want to, or at least I want to, I feel to speak on um, the power of prayer. And then specifically the power of prayer for breakthroughs and turnarounds. We're going to zoom in on the life of David a little bit. In 1 Samuel 22. First Samuel 22, verse 1 and 2. It says, David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. This is after David killed Goliath and became captain in Saul's army. and Saw a breakthrough there really. But then Saul became jealous of him. The Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and was upon David. And now Saul became jealous and envious of him and wanted to murder David. So David had to run. So David finds himself in a cave, in the cave of Adullam. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there, they went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men with him. So here we see David finding himself in a cave on the run for what was supposed to be his spiritual father. And what it looked like, far from the plan and purpose of God for his life. To top it all off, he's not just in a cave by himself. Everyone who was in distress... Everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. 400 guys. What an army to build with. If you start a church, I pray you don't get everyone who was in debt, everyone who's discontented, and everyone who's in distress. <laughs> but that's how this whole thing started with David. You know, later you can read about David's mighty men and giant killers and all these different things. In Saul's army, there were zero giant killers. But David became a giant killer himself and then raised up a bunch of other giant killers. But where did those guys come from? They came from those who were in debt, those who were in distress, and those who were discontented. When they hung around David, something changed in them. When they spent time with David, they, they, the, the people that you could look at as the trash of society became leaders and became a mighty army and they did mighty valiant things with David. Let's fast forward to our time today. Regardless of the way you see yourself, Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Regardless of where you find yourself in life today, there is an open door with our Lord Jesus Christ and he says, come to me. They came to David and their life turned around. But you and I, we have an even greater one than David. We can come to Jesus. 
We can come to Jesus. You say, Ben, what does it have to do with prayer? Everything to do with prayer. We said it this morning, what you hang around, you get infected with. Right? What, what you hang around with starts rubbing off on you. They hung around David and they became giant killers. We hang around with Jesus. <laughs> we become more than conquerors. We become strong in the Lord. We become mountain movers. We become people who lay hands on the sick and see them recover. We become those who, who, who cast out devils. We become those who, who, who seek first the kingdom of God. We become those who love God above all other things. We, 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 we become like Jesus. Prayer is such an important thing. Jesus said, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jesus said also, I didn't come for the healthy, I came for the sick. I didn't come for the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. Some people disqualify themselves from coming, in, coming before the throne of grace in prayer. Because they're like, well, I'm in, I'm in distress. I'm discontented. I'm in debt or whatever. I have this problem. I have that problem. I can't really come boldly. But Jesus says, I didn't come for perfect people. I came to call those who know they need a physician. I've come to call those who know they need a savior. I've come to call those who know that they're one big mess without me. Amen. Then come. And hang on that cross with me so they become, die with me so they can live with me as well. In Isaiah 8 verse 18, this is a prophecy about Jesus and there for us as well. He says, here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Did you know that you are destined to become a walking, living, breathing sign and a wonder in your generation? <laughs> I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are all descendants of Christ, right? Like we're with the seed of Abraham. We are for signs and wonders. You might have been in debt. You might have been in distress. You might have been dis discontented and bitter and hurt before. But when you start hanging around in that secret place, guess what? That, that discontentment's going to leave. That debt's going to vanish as snow before the sun. <laughs> that, that distress is leaving and it's replaced with faith. And you're not going to stay in that cave very long because you're coming out and going to live in the palace. We are for signs and wonders in Israel. There's a lot of people here that your family always looked at you and said that, that, that nothing good can come from that one. There's a lot of you that if you look at yourself naturally speaking, you've written yourself off a long time ago. But then Jesus stepped in. The Bible says that not many high and not many mighty were called. But God chooses the foolish things of this world. <laughs> Thank you Jesus. To confound the wise. Some people want to be wise and eloquent and fit in with the higher echelons of society and make the gospel palatable to, to the world out there, but not me. I want to hook up with Jesus. The wisdom of God, even the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of man. We're called to be signs and wonders. Look at Ephesians 2. Just now... For some people here, the last three minutes, you've had more Bible scriptures than the last seven Sundays in your church. <laughs> Just saying. In church, we should preach the word. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Okay. Ephesians 2 verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy... Because of his great love with which he loved us. Oh man, look at that. When you were in debt, in distress, discontented. With his great love with which he loved you. But God who is rich in mercy. Just think about your father. Chew on that for a second. God who is rich in mercy. Rich in mercy. Where you mess up something. You know you've messed up. And you're like, the devil starts lying. You better not come to church again. You better not pray for a while. God doesn't want to hear from you. Just think about, my God, who is rich in mercy. 
And that's not an excuse to stay messing up. But it's a really good excuse to come before the throne of grace and obtain mercy and help in time of need so you don't stay a mess up, but you become victorious over whatever messed you up. Hallelujah. Some people say, oh, we're just a, we're just a bunch of broken pieces and we're always going to be broken pieces. Speak for yourself, not me. The Bible says you are complete in Christ. Amen. So you might have come a broken piece, but Jesus didn't say, come to me, all who labor and heavy laden. I'm going to leave you broken. He said, I will heal your broken heart. I will set the captive free. I will break that heavy yoke off your neck. Hallelujah. Those who wait upon the Lord, they will mount up with wings like eagles. They will soar high above the storm. The Bible says that he specializes in taking the beggar out of the dunghill and setting among princes. Oh man. <laughs> There's some people here. We were all beggars. We were down and out. But God set us. God is placing us in places of influence all across society to speak into our world, to be a light in the dark places, to be the salt of the earth, a city on a hill. And everybody's scratching their head wondering how in the world is it possible through this person. But it's God being glorified because everyone knows it's not you. It's not by might. It's not by power. God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved you. Not just any love. Great love. Great love. Great love. The Holy Spirit doesn't even have words for it. He's just so rich in mercy. His great love. What I, I try every week on Sunday when, when we do an altar call and people give their lives to Jesus. I try, I really try to tell people how much God loves them. But it's not communicable in words. But for me in 2006 at 3 o'clock in the morning in my little bedroom in Ada in July, summer night, I said, Jesus, if you're real, make me as happy as my brother who had told me about Jesus just an hour before that. And that love came in. There was no words. It's just that super duper high octane, unleaded, supernatural love that just... There's no words for it. It's supernatural. It's undeserved. It's overwhelming. It's too much to handle. That love came in. I felt like I was exploding. His great love with which he loved you. Romans 5 says that if God, when we were yet sinners, proved his love for us. We weren't even looking for him. But even then he proved his love for us. How much more now that we're his children? Will he love us even more? <laughs> you say, I thought we were going to talk about prayer. If you don't know how loved you are, you won't come in prayer. You'll always be under condemnation. You'll always be shy from, from the presence of God. You're always going to be like dancing around the issue. You're always going to try to wrestle things out in your own strength. But guess what? You are different than this world. You don't have to wrestle things out in your own strength like an orphan. You have a hotline to heaven. You have a father. The Bible says he leads us with his eye upon us. He knows every hair on our head. He knows every thought in our mind. He knows our rising up and our lying down. He knows our coming in and our going, going out. And he, he, he carries us with everlasting arms. He's very involved with our lives. And he says, call unto me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things. He's like come on call to me. Let me help you. <laughs> Let me strengthen you. Let me be with you in trouble. Give me an invitation to move in your life and watch what I will do. Give me an opportunity to show my strong mighty arm in your life. I want to challenge everyone, don't struggle through April. Don't struggle through 2024. Don't wrestle your way out. Run to the secret place. Lift those holy hands. 
Lift up your voice unto your heavenly Father and say, Father, here is me again. And I come with boldness before your throne of grace and I obtain some mercy today. I've come to receive wisdom for today, strength for today, joy for today, love for today. Thank you that you're with me. Thank you that you helped me. Thank you that you never leave me nor forsake me. And thank you that you're moving these obstacles out of my way for me. Some people, they're quick to run all kinds of places. They run to the doctor. They run to their friends. They run to their rich whatever. And, and they're like, oh, can you help me? Oh, I need answers. But I want to challenge you. You be different than this world. Before you run anywhere else, run to God. Run to God. Run to Him. Run into everlasting arms. And get the answer from heaven. You hear people struggling with things. That day, well, three days of prayer and fasting can deal with that thing once and for all. I have this ongoing problem. I just can't seem to get free. Get on your face. Cry out to God. Lock yourself in a room. Shut the phone off. Shut the TV off. And press into God and walk out of that room with the answer from heaven. Hallelujah. See, there's, there's, there's areas in people's lives that the enemy will try to keep them out of. Because he knows when you get that breakthrough, it produces breakthrough for all these people behind you. David was a giant killer, but the, 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 the devil was like, I'm not getting him in that palace because then what's going to happen? Puts him in a cave. Ends up in a cave. Well, guess what? Couldn't stop the plan of God. Because David was a man of the secret place. He's like, I'm not going to get bitter. I'm not going to get discontented. I'm not going to get in distress. I'm not going to get in debt. I'm going to be different. I'm going to be a man of the secret place. I'm going to have my home in heaven. I'm going to reach out to him. One thing I desire, one thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I'm going to be different. I'm going to be different. And guess what? The devil couldn't stop him. And he produced breakthrough for many, many, many others and for his whole nation. His whole nation. You know what? That there's people here that your family depends on your breakthrough. There's others, whole cities depend on your breakthrough. Others, whole nations depend on your breakthrough. That you break through. There's things that for, for many, your last name, no one in your family has broken through. Everyone's had a horrible marriage. Everyone's had a mess with finances. No one's had a successful business. But you're going to be different. You're going to, God stepped into your life at the right time. And when he put that cross there, things change. You're of a new bloodline and things are turning around. Hallelujah. You're for signs and wonders. Okay, let's, let's read on. Because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Then in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. I'll read that in the New Living Translation. Ephesians 2 verse 7. So God has done everything. You know, by grace you are saved. Then he made us die together with Christ. Raised us with Christ. Gave us the life of Christ. Made us sit together with Christ in heavenly places. For what reason? Ephesians 2 verse 7 in the, in the New Living. So God can point to us. God can point to you. In all future ages. As examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us. He's basically saying, I'm making you my billboard of how good I am. Ik maak jou mijn reclameboord van mijn genade en mijn goedheid. So that everyone who passes by your life can see what a good God I am. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so he can point to us. In all future ages. Not just now, but for all the ages to come. <laughs> look at my redeeming power. Look at what a mess they were, but look at what I've made out of them. 
Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says that in verse 10, he says that we are God's masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. So God is not, you're not some kind of broken piece. You're a masterpiece. You're a masterpiece made by the master. That he's putting together for his glory. So that everyone who looks at your life is like, wow, how good is God? Think about Lazarus who died, was in the grave stinking and rotting. But then Jesus rose him from the dead. Guess what? Everyone, who, everyone wanted to come to that house. I want to see that guy who died. He became a walking testimony of the goodness of God. He wasn't Lazarus the leper anymore. He became Lazarus who was raised from the dead. Lazarus had reclame bord van God. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's you and me. You are Nando Gods reclamebord. Hallelujah. Jari, het uithangbord van de genade van God. Hallelujah. Jaap en Klaaske, de, de gunst reclamebord. Ik heb geen andere woorden meer. Het billboard van gunst en van goedheid. So even when people come around you, they're like, what is that? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So that's why the Bible says, lift up your head. Strengthen the feeble knees. Why? You're not supposed to walk around bowed down, in, embarrassed in shame. The Bible says that those who look at him, they will never stand ashamed. Shame will never darken their faces again. You will not stand ashamed. You get double for all your trouble because God in heaven is making you his billboard. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 15 verse 16, he said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I chose you for what? I an, and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. And then it says, and herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. Much fruit. So Jesus chose you and I as foolish, in debt, distressed, discontented, whatever he found us, whatever state he found us in. And then he makes us to be signs and wonders that bear much fruit so that the Father can be glorified through us. And we just stand there and watch, and He does it all through us. He produces in us both the will and to do of His good pleasure. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a plan of redemption. What a great mystery that we get to be a part of. That's why the Bible even says that angels desire to look into the things that we are now living in. Christianity is not trying to be like Jesus. Christianity is dying. So you can be like Jesus. One more scripture before we talk about prayer. Galatians 2 verse 20. This will lay a foundation so you can come boldly when you pray. So you know that God's plan for you is not to do you harm. Like the Bible says in, in Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Not plans to harm you. Not plans for evil. God's got a good plan for your life. Galatians 2 verse 20. Watch this. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. That will solve a lot of problems. You say, I have, I have this and this problem. Because you're living too much. This week I, I almost... I had a little traffic fight. <laughs> I told the RBI2 students. I was bringing my kids to school. And it was very rainy on the road. It was like this two-way end road, you know. And we're driving. And the left lane was full of cars because they were turning left to go on the highway. But the right lane was open. Light is green. I did slow down. So I'm going like 50 or 60. And I'm slowly, you know, passing these Cars that are sitting to go left. But sure enough, this blinkity, blinkity, blank, blank. <laughs> he cuts right in front of me. As he's, par he's parked. And he goes right in front of me and wants to go. And I slammed the brakes. So hard. I, my foot almost came down to the ground, you know. 
And my car is like sliding in the rain. And I think I'm going to crash into, the, into this car. And I have my two kids in the back. One of which I've already had this experience with. Which she reminds me of quite regularly. She's like, Daddy, remember you had an accident? Mommy's never had an accident. <laughs> I'm like, I remember. I remember. <laughs> also not my fault, but still. I'm being looked at as if it was my fault. So I'm not happy that this guy cuts in front of me and I'm literally almost smashing into his back. Sliding. So you can understand, I am very upset. <laughs> but an upset that's not, not good, you know. <laughs> so I'm yelling at the guy and the kids are like, Daddy, do not my ogres to go. But we get at a light, and now I'm behind, and I'm stopped right behind him. And I take my seatbelt off, I open the car door, I want to jump out, I want to tell this guy. My kids scream, Dad, stay in the car! So I stayed in the car. <laughs> Later, I thought about it. I was like, what was I going to do? It's like, what if it's some big guy? You know, like, <laughs> you read the newspaper. <laughs> Angry dad gets beat up because he's an idiot. How traumatizing for the children. So I get back in the car and I'm like, I still want, I, I couldn't see who was in the car because he has these like curtains in the back. That's the problem. You don't need curtains in the back window. You need to be able to see. So anyway, I'm trying to get next to him and, and I didn't know, but Juliana, my daughter, she's praying. She's like, Lord, let the car turn. Let, the car, let that car turn somewhere else so daddy comes down. So sure enough, next light, the guy turns to the left. So she's like, he turned, Daddy. You can't see him anymore. I'm like. <laughs> so I dropped the kids off a few minutes later. And I'm driving back home. But I'm driving to work. And I'm like, man, I shouldn't be that upset. That's not, that's not good. It's not good for my heart. It's not a good example to the kids. What's going on? And, and it's like, you get so upset because you're still alive. I've been crucified with Christ. You know, a dead person, you can kick him, you can spit on him, but they don't care. They're dead. They don't respond. But you cut me off in traffic, I respond. <laughs> so it's just like, okay, I just got to die. So a lot of people have a lot of issues. They're like, oh, pray for me, the devil's troubling. No, you're just way too alive. You're way too alive. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Watch this. Who loved me and gave himself for me. That's special. Paul writing that makes it so personal. He's like, Christ who loved me. He didn't say who loved the world and died for the world, gave himself up for the world. But he made it super personal. I died, I rose with him, and he did it for me. You can make these things personal. You, you, we all, we can come to this, we can ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, give us a revelation of your love for us. How much you love us. Because the Bible says that when we come to know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, we become this body, holy filled and flooded with God himself. Full of love. Full of God. God is love. But many times we have problems walking in love because we're still alive. Somebody looks at us wrong and we... What does it have to do with prayer? Everything. Because when you do crazy things like that, if you're not solid with the Lord, then you're going to be under condemnation for three weeks. Like, oh, I can't pray. I yelled at that guy in the car. Hebrews 4 verse 16. We could put it on the screen. Let's talk about prayer. <clears throat> Don't get so quiet on me when I'm talking about dying. <laughs> I'm doing an altar call. Who needs to die? <laughs> Many things are not deliverance. I believe in deliverance. We pray for devils. To, well, we don't pray. Well, we, we cast out devils and all these things. But, but a lot of things, when it comes to maturing as a Christian, it's not deliverance. It's living a crucified life. 
leaving the old man on that cross, buried with Christ. And, and stepping in the new life that was raised with him. Hebrews 4 verse 16, it says, let us therefore. What, you know what's right before this? He, he's got a whole chapter talking about that Christ is the priest after the order of Melchizedek. And he's there at the right hand of God pleading for us as the, as the mediator between us and God. So having such a great high priest, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Everybody say boldly. boldly. Can't come boldly when you're under condemnation. Can't come boldly when you don't know how loved you are. Can't come boldly when you don't believe that God actually wants to hear from you. Can't come boldly when the devil is lying. This is wrong with you. That's wrong with you. That's wrong. You're just a bunch of broken pieces. Oh, but you can come boldly when you know that you are to be a sign and a wonder in this generation. You can come boldly when you know that his great love that he's had before, with his exceeding great riches of his mercy that he has for you. You can come boldly. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Who can use some mercy and grace this week? Yeah. There's a place you can find it day in, day out, every week, every month. It's always available. It's always constant and the door is always open. Amen. Let us come boldly. We're talking about prayer for a turnaround. To become that sign and a wonder in our generation. Well, then we have to come boldly and say, Lord, I have this situation in my life that I need a turnaround in. It, it's this and that and that. But your word says this and that and that. And I believe your word, not the circumstance. So I put them next to each other. And you are the judge of all the world. Would you not do right, Lord? And I thank you. I put you in remembrance of your word. And I thank you, Lord, that you're fixing this wrong in my life. I thank you that you line my life up with what your word says about me. This word, that word, that word. And I'm standing on these scriptures and I thank you for it. See, then you get a turnaround. Then you get a breakthrough. But when you come and you complain, you're like, oh, Lord. Pastor Ben preached on, you know, month of April being a month of blessings and breakthroughs. I put money in the bucket, but I'm still not seeing anything. And I should have kept my money. And oh, I, I'm never going there again. And I just don't understand. I heard a testimony of Shireen. She got a breakthrough, but nothing good ever happens to me. And Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> that's many people's prayer life add some tears add some Kleenex and tissues add some action on the knees you know maybe even falling on their faces sprinkling dust on their heads sackcloth and ashes walking around with a long face and they think they had a real good prayer time that's not praying in the new covenant. There is, I don't know, have you seen a wailing wall in this building? We didn't build one. <laughs> the Bible says in Psalm 100, we come before His presence with thanksgiving. We come singing praises. See, God, no matter the circumstance, God's never to blame. As for God, His way is perfect. I had to unlearn this so badly. I was a world-class complainer. If we had a complaining competition, I would win every time. I promise. If you talk about glass half empty, mine was not even half empty. It was, it was empty. Oh God. <laughs> oh. Why? I don't understand. How come you're doing it for him and not for me? Oh God. Do you, have, do you even really love me, Lord? <laughs> la, 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 la. Do you not care about me and the situation I am in? Oh, God. You crackle your voice a bit. <laughs> we 
we think, oh, God will be very sympathetic with my trouble. But the Bible says that he who comes to God must believe. Must believe. And there's no believing in that at all. The only thing you're believing is the negative report. Just like the Israelites in the desert. And they died in the wilderness because they complained. And the Bible even talks about it in the New Covenant in, in 1 Corinthians 10. That these things happened as examples to us so that we wouldn't fall in the same trap. It talks about lusting. It talks about idolatry. And then it talks about complaining. They're all in the same category. <laughs> So God does not like complaining. And we think that's praying. <laughs> and we think that if we complain and beg and moan and nag enough that God will finally have pity on us and answer us. But this is not how it works, my friends. We have to know that God's plan for us is so good. He wants to give us good things. The Bible said, Jesus said this in Matthew 7, that if you, even though you're evil, you know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? He wants to give good things. The Bible says, no good thing will He withhold from those who walk uprightly. He's a good Father. He says, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God's a good God. He's never to blame. So if there's a situation in our life that doesn't line up with the, word, with the word, we don't come and blame God. We can't say, oh Lord, I've been tithing. I've been coming to church. I'm an usher. I sing on the worship team. I was out in the rain as a parking attendant, parking cars. Nobody even waved. <laughs> and the person who didn't wave was there on the, on the stage testifying. But I've been such a good Christian. I've even been out soul winning, Lord. And I just don't understand. This is not right that this is happening in my life. And God's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Because when we come to God, we can never come on the basis of our own credits and our own merits. We can never come to God and say, I've done this and I've done that and I've done so and I've done so. Because what we're doing without knowing, we're coming on the basis of self-righteousness. Self-righteousness. We think that by our good deeds we can come and, you know, a streepje voorhalen bij God waardoor ons gebed beantwoord wordt. That's nonsense. That's not how it works. We can only come on one basis and that's the blood. That's the blood. It's only by the blood. It's only by the blood. And the blood speaks louder than the blood of Abel. It speaks of grace and mercy. So when we come, we don't come, oh Lord, I've done this and I've done that and you're wrong. We can come, oh Lord. Your word says this. In my life it's like that. I know you're never wrong. But this situation is wrong. And I'm not blaming you. And I'm not looking at myself. But what I do, I uphold the covenant that I'm in. The covenant sealed with the blood of Jesus. And I thank you for my covenant, Lord. And I thank you for your abundant mercy to me, towards me. And I thank you that you're a good God. And I thank you that your word never fails. And I thank you, Lord, this situation is turning around because you're not a man that you should lie. You're not a God who is, who is deaf and doesn't answer. Your arm is stretched out towards me. Your eyes are upon me. And I thank you, you're a very present help in time of need. And guess what? Instead of moaning and complaining, you start thanking and praising and oh, hallelujah. I thank you that you're working mightily in my life. I thank you this mountain is moving. I thank you I'm coming right through this battle. I thank you, Lord, you're turning it around for me. I thank you you're the God of the breakthrough. I thank you that you're my help in time of need. I thank you I'm coming right through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil for you are with me. Oh, I thank you that your good hand is upon my life. And I think you strengthened me. And I think the answer is already on its way. Oh, I give you praise and I give you glory. And a day goes by and two days goes by. And the devil will try to put your eyes back on the natural circumstance. And say, oh, where is that answer? How come you still haven't seen it? Blame God. Like the wife of Job. She said, curse God and die. But he said, oh, you are a foolish woman. I'm not going to curse my God. And two days go by, three days go by, you keep looking at the natural circumstance, you fall back into complaining. But that's not going to be you. You're going gonna, gonna to be like Abraham. Because you have Abraham kind of faith residing on the inside of you. 
Oh, you're not going to look at what it looks like. Abraham did not consider his own body now already dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. What did he consider? He considered the promises of God and that he was faithful to do what was promised. He kept, look, kept his eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He kept the eyes on the prize. He kept seeing and speaking and rejoicing. The Bible says he was fully persuaded that God was able to do what God had promised fully persuaded and he gave God glory he just went around oh hallelujah I'm Abraham father of many nations praise God oh hallelujah my descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky my descendants will be as numerous as the sand on the seashore how, how do you know Abraham how can you be so happy how can you be so joyful how can you have such a peace you don't even have an heir to all this wealth you have gathered he's like oh but you can't see what I see Amen. you haven't heard what I hear you don't know who I know. I'm hooked up with the faithful one. His name is the faithful one. He's too faithful to fail. His name is God Almighty. Will anything be too hard for him? Oh, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. Oh, hallelujah. David had a moment where he was feeling greatly distressed. He lived in a place called Ziklag with 600 of these, you know, bandits with him. Leading this army. But they were out somewhere and then they came back to their city and their whole city had been robbed and burned down. Their wives were gone. Their children were gone. Everything they had was gone. And those men that were with him wanted to kill him. Talk about discouragement. But guess what David did? 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to wrap up soon, I think. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. It says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. Notice that it doesn't say anything about the wives. <laughs> I'm just leaving that in the middle. <laughs> but... They must have not had a wife like me. But they're like crying about their sons and daughters. Like, take my wife, but give my, my son and my daughter back. <laughs> but it says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And then David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod to me, here to me. And he brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Right before the biggest victories is usually the biggest tests. David, this is a chapter before he come, becomes king in Israel or in Judah. A chapter before. He has this big challenge. People want to kill him. He's greatly distressed, even discouraged. But what does he do? Does he ring his uncle? Oh, please help. Does he call the government? Hey, they're behind, they're after me, and this is not, this is not right. Does he sit in the corner and say, Oh God, I can't believe you'd let this happen to me? Here I am living in a cave. You anointed me. I don't deserve all this. What did he do? He encouraged himself in the Lord. He ran back to the secret place and he received wisdom from heaven. What do I do, Lord? I don't know what to do. But you are the God who has all wisdom. And God spoke to him on that crossroad. God strengthened him and God told him what to do. And guess what? He pursued. He overtook them. He recovered all and everything that those enemy armies had stolen on their way, he took with them. So now what was supposed to be his downfall led to a massive explosion of victory and wealth and abundance for David and for his men. In the next chapter, he's king in Judah. So some people... They say, man, I don't understand why there's so much pressure. How come I'm not seeing the break? Turn up the heat. Whatever the enemy doesn't want you to do, do it twice as hard. Double down in prayer. Double down in confession. Double down in praise and in thanksgiving. Let the devil know he messed with the wrong person. You will not be taken out. You will not be going down. You will not be kept out of your promised land. You're going to set your feet on the promises of God and you're going to see them fulfilled. You will have your breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I can give you Story after story, testimony after testimony of many others 
that had a victory in prayer. Daniel, who prayed, and the lions went on a fast. <laughs> Hannah, who prayed, and after she prayed, there was no physical evidence of anything changing in her life. But she took the word of the Lord. And the Bible says her face was not sad anymore. She walked away happy knowing I got my answer. People looking at her still mocking her, making fun of her. You don't have any children. It's embarrassing. That's how they would talk to her. But she walked around happy because she knew I got my answer from heaven. And a year later she had her baby. All by prayer. Prayer unlocks breakthroughs and turnarounds. One key in prayer is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is not just like, Father, zegen deze spijze om Jezus wil. Amen. Lord, bless me, my wife, us four, our two kids, us four, no more. In Jesus' name. There's power in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do. Whatever you ask. Whatever you ask. Let's stand to our feet. And let's lift our hands. And before we close out, the worship team can come up. But before we close out tonight, let's take a moment and pray. Lift those holy hands. <laughs> oh, You might have a situation. In your family, loved ones, work, things just keep hitting a ceiling, hitting a ceiling, hitting a ceiling. But I believe when we lift up our voice together, the Bible talks about Peter being in prison. But then the whole church prayed for him. There's power when the church prays. The whole church prayed for him. And then the night before he was supposed to get beheaded by Herod, an angel of the Lord took him out of that prison. And set him free. Even when we pray tonight. Heavenly help is released. In your situations. Angels will move things around. God's mighty hand moving things around in your favor. Causing you to become that sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voice. Oh, le mande riba sapra takati. Onde le manca pore deva ti apasatai. Oh, rebasse paradaka po levata kai. Lo brevente le bacassa paradisti. Cole barrita calabaco sopra taia tai. Non devete le bossa paradaka po levanti. Yes, ti pale cu levanta la brosse pataka ti avon. Supricata le bosse paradeke vanta pale vosti ki atai. Oh, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for every need represented in this place. Every situation that looks like a deep pit. But I thank you, Lord. You hear every person's cry tonight. You stretch out your mighty hand. You pull them out out of the miry clay. And you set them on a, on a rock to stand. And you fill their mouth with a new song. I thank you for testimony upon testimony of your goodness. I thank you for turning around in people's favor. I thank you, Lord, every hand that blocks their miracle, that blocks their breakthrough. I thank you that those hands are cut off today in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, it's released right now. It's released right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, rabakata rebasatai. On de lebra barabakato prasatai. those finances that are locked up in some other nation we speak be released in Jesus name Those orders that have come in but never really were released, we command them to be released in Jesus' name. Those buildings that were supposed to be in your hand, the property was supposed to be in your hand, but they were held back. We speak to them, doors be opened in the name of Jesus. Be released in Jesus' name. Be opened up in Jesus' name.
debts be canceled in the name of Jesus. Those children who have walked away from the Lord on the wrong path, Father, we thank you that your angels go and shake them up, wake them up, let them come to their senses tonight. Let their eyes be open tonight. We call them home in Jesus' name. Come home in Jesus' name. Come home in Jesus' name. Eyes be open in Jesus' name. Father, I think that you sent people their way as divine connections to speak the gospel to them, ministering to them. Oh, Rabaka Seprata Lebasa. Chronic pains, chronic pains. I curse chronic pains in Jesus' name. Every chronic disease pestering your life. I command it to be broken by the blood of Jesus now. Now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. From heaven, the answer does come. Oh, Rema Makati. Oh, Rema Mamasetera Makati. Oh, Rimakati Labo Sapai. Joblessness. I rebuke joblessness in the name of Jesus. I call in the best jobs for the people of God. The best opportunities, the best hours. Not on Sundays, not late nights. Good schedules, good pays. We call it in now in Jesus' name. No more joblessness. No more joblessness. Manda la brosse pacati. L'ombra macata la bossa paia tacai. Oh, rebacati pa. Si prete, lo prasa tacapo. So prevete la mancati. Oh, any form of barrenness, physical barrenness, spiritual barrenness, financial barrenness, I speak over your life. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. And multiply in Jesus' name. That curse is reversed by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You will bear much fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus Christ, every bondage of barrenness is broken tonight. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, that you reach out with your mighty hand. I see, I see the Lord taking off grave clothes of condemnation and I don't even want to say it but death through religion this black cloth black clothes on people always keeping them down always keeping them condemned I see the Lord taking it off and putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus you foul spirit of religion you foul spirit of condemnation leave in Jesus name break in Jesus name go in Jesus name
Thank you, Lord, for clothing your people with a coat of many colors. Oh, thank you, Lord. A coat of joy, a coat of freedom, a coat of blessing. No longer will your head bow in shame, but you can lift your heart. Oh, for you are our glory and the lifter up of our head. Oh, for thou, O oh Lord, are our glory and the lifter of our head. All shame removed. All shame removed tonight. All shame removed. Roll the way. Roll the way. Instead of shame, the Bible says you get double honor. Double honor. Father, I pray you honor your people. You honor your people. Everything the enemy meant for evil. I think you give double honor instead. Everything that was a, a place of shame in their life. Turn it into double honor. No longer ashamed. No longer ashamed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Man, I feel the anointing on that. Oh, vrata se pakati astaya pakati. Corre basa para di vra pakati. Ombre vanti peri astaya la bukusa pravakati. Oh, reba. Come on, take a moment and just deep cry. Let deep cry out to deep. Come on, from your innermost being, just let that river flow out of your belly. Oh, rabasta pakan. Rebanka talabostaye. Robose para da kavi. Ribasse para de kavanta boy. Lo brava talamaka tia pastoyo. Oh, rabandele makampo. Rabakante la bakastoya. Rebakanta la bosa taye. Oh, ribostaye. Rabababa ribakata po. Roba baba rita se prete, lo breva tata riba kata, o sa brava ta, rapa kasi patolo, o reba kasi pro, si brava tata rika staye, o le pandele, lo brasa taya, o mercy, 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 mercy upon your people, grace. Abundant grace. Oh, Shabbatha, Shabbatha, ya, lo puvete te ya, rikata la busata. I was reading in Song of Solomon today, or to, this week, earlier this week. And it talks about, you know, the Shunammite woman and, and her beloved. You know, it's, it's, it's a love letter between the church, the bride, and the bridegroom, Jesus. And the, the, the lady, the Shunammite, which is a picture of, of the bride, of, of the church. She's like, I, I, I look for my beloved, but I can't find him. And then she's like, she goes into the city and she looks for him. And then she goes by the poortwachters, you know, the, 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 the watchmen on the city gates. And she's like, have you seen my beloved? Have you seen the one whom my soul loves? And they're like, no, we haven't seen him. And then next verse, she goes a little further. And she says, and then I saw him, then I found him. You say, what does that have to do with me? Sometimes God draws us to go a little further. Just a little further. You say, I, I came to church, but I still have this and that. I, I, I have this desire and this longing in my heart. But, but the Holy Spirit saying, come. Come up higher. Come a little further. Come a little further. Outside of the gates of your normal Christianity. A little further. I'm not saying outside of the gates of the word. I'm just saying. I'm 
secret place. Come, my beloved. Come. He said, if you seek my face, you'll find me. If you seek me with all your heart, one thing I desire, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days, and I may gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and dwell in his temple. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. more, a little further, a little deeper, more of you, Lord. We're not just hungry for answers, we're hungry for you, for you, Lord. He's my beloved. I am my beloved's and my beloved's is mine. I'm his and he's mine. And the Lord is saying, come. 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 I could start a whole nother service right now. Oh, Jesus. 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 How lovely are your dwelling places, Lord. so close by here. I don't so close by here. Don't go there. Oh, don't go there. Oh, I've got a pocket here. Oh, 
Ole mama ma yeshua priyate kapo yeshua. Oh, oh, vala pasi priyate If you have to go home, you can go home, but we're just going to take another moment here in the presence of God. If you have to go home, we understand, you know, trains leaving and all these things, you know, but we want to honor the presence of God. I'm not going to shut it down right now. If you want to stay and pray and press in for just another moment and press in with me. Oh. We can say bye bye to the live stream. Good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Go to our website, riverchurch.nl.